Try. But we are turning the microphone over to you, sir. We don't need any police reports or doctor reports. Can you tell us, in your own words, what what happened? 70 miles per hour. Oh, okay. On a Kentucky state route, which doesn't have shoulders, in a Hummer. Now, there's no shoulders on those roads. No. I was on my way to take the famous, critically acclaimed Calgary Stampede Stu Hart 80th anniversary show mm-hmm. tape. I made a few dubs of it. I was going to mail it off to some personal friends. One of them had slid down at my foot by the gas pedal. Um, as I reached down to grab it, the width of that vehicle is, is so immense that as I reached down to grab, I just slid off into the shoulder a little bit. It's something... That shot me across the double yellow line, okay? Mm-hmm. All right. Now I'm off-road. Now, we're, now picture this. We're out in Kentucky, you know, horse farms, the Pillman compound, etc. <laughs> I figured I started out at 70 miles per hour. I think, okay, I'm off-road. I'm in a Hummer. Everything's cool. No problem. I'll slow down. I'll get back on the road. Mm-hmm. That's the last thing I remember until I woke up in the hospital. Holy cow. But what had happened is, down where I live, due to the ravenous greed of developers, they want to they destroy America the Beautiful and put up all these subdivisions and housing projects, etc. Well, not ha- there's no housing projects where I live, but <laughs> more like giant palatial estates. So they have to cut down all these trees. Well, they decided to cut this big oak tree down to a stump. And unfortunately for me, the way they cut it was like at a wedge shape. And I hit that thing, unbeknownst to me, 70 miles per hour, and I instantly became evil Knievel. It was like a ramp. Shot up in the air, then proceeded to come straight down, nose first. And luckily for me, I didn't have a seatbelt on because when I hit nose first, it was like pressing the eject button of an F- F-16. Huh. It shot me straight out, and, and once again, due to my dedication and, and just overall genetic gifts, you know, having a 20-inch neck, I pierced the convertible top of that vehicle with my head like a bullet was shot out 50 feet away from the vehicle. It ended up doing uh, two end-over-end flips. Oh, my Lord. And you wonder why we're having tr- trouble going toe-to-toe with the Croats and Serbs? <laughs> That's a military vehicle. The thing is totaled. I'm still here. All right, what were you... What was the ex- supposed to be able to take on a landmine. Brian, what was the extent of your injuries? Um, my face was uh, shattered and my... my Ankle was broken. Mm-hmm. It's, That's it. it. Actually, it sounds like you got away from uh, You're a fairly lucky man for an accident like that. Well, I, you know, your average everyday 9 to 5 Joe would have died at the scene. <laughs> no, most you got to remember it was me. I mean, <laughs> got to remember the survival instincts that I got. The yeah. pride, the courage I take into, into trying to give this country a shot in the arm. Well, you're doing a good job. Now, now you're not having plastic surgery and, uh, you know, got to go into the WWF as Shawn Michaels' twin or something. Oh. I don't know what goes on America How Online. Ridiculous is that? Think about that statement. Uh, it's, it's preposterous, but just to you make it official. You showing up next year at the uh, NFL Alumni Banquet I go to every year mm-hmm. with some of the all-time greats who I've, I've come to gain a rapport with and say, Hey, it's, it's, it's really Brian. I, I just decided to look like a dick dancer because it would make me more money. Come on, guys. Hey, we're, we're only asking about the rumors that we heard. But wait, I don't want you to get off this subject for a second. Um, when do you expect to be fully recovered? I mean, a broken ankle, a shattered face, that's some pretty heavy-duty stuff. Are you, is it completely restructured? Is that what had to happen to your face? No, it was just they just, it was just they were all broken and they just had to. Okay. Like, right now... I am the owner of four steel titanium plates 
bolted to my face to hold everything together. And I'm sorry, guys. I don't look anything like that guy. Look, I thought Mrs. Butterfuco had it tough. Because you guys don't oh. have a dump button, but yeah, it's a family the show. Male dancer. I look nothing like him. I look like Brian Evan Pillman with a swollen face and black eyes. Sorry. Oh. Okay, so it looks like you were in a bad street fight. Or Larry King. Oh, well, if I'd have been in a street <laughs> fight, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have had any marks on me. This is true. Okay. Now, is this going to take away at all from your plans? When we had you on the show a few weeks ago, you talked about working with Stallone. Has that happened already? Actually, that, that, uh, that has taken away from that, that particular movie, but lo and behold, I just got a, uh, another script in the uh, FedEx to me yesterday in the mail. And I'm looking at that, and um, of course that that's some you know second tier players starring Lawrence Fishburne, but it's another movie. Hey, it's a payoff. <laughs> who who would be directing that movie? The Universal's uh, Pictures movie, and they haven't uh, decided a director yet. Can you give us a title? Any more information? We're curious. Is this going to be one of those Piper straight to home videos, I'm or gonna hop over on one leg right now to the <laughs> to where I left the script. Huh. So we we'll have to move to another area. Okay. Maybe we. Hey, maybe we could get. I'd like to know the name. Yeah, we'd like to get you to perform one of the acts. Let's hear your <laughs> talent. I think it's. I think it's called. Uh, there were two titles they haven't finalized yet. One of them was Hoodlum, and one of them was something else. And it was by Universal Pictures owns the. Uh, okay. The script, and I even know who it's written by, but you know those writers are. They're, yeah, they don't want their name out they're yet. They're part of the media, like you. They're Brian, stuff. when do you consider yourself, uh, when do you think you're going to be back in top form? When is this injury going to be healed? When are you going to be able to get in the ring and perform to your best? Looks like it's going to be early in 97. Um, I'm starting from scratch, obviously. The mm -hmm. uh, ankle had to be reconstructed. Are you in pain right now? Um, most of the pain has subsided from the surgery, and uh, I've done a good job of... Uh, keeping the ankle rested and hoping to expedite the healing process, so... Okay, now, serious question. You get back in the ring sometime in early 97. I assume it's early. Um, I mean, isn't, isn't that a danger to your career? I mean, shouldn't you wait, like, longer for a, an injury that was this bad? Who's telling... Who's well, I'm going to wait till I get full medical clearance. Uh, I've been told I, I should be ready... Uh, you know, three to four months. Okay, okay. So, but, so you're uh, not rushing into it at least. Okay. Hey, listen, are you still pursuing a movie career? Yeah, I am. I have uh, was supposed to read for a part, uh movie starring uh, Melanie Griffith and um, Sal Palminteri. Yep. Uh, unfortunately, that, that was going to start shooting in January, and the uh. surgeries uh, put that off. But... Uh, the role was going to be a um, a crazed lunatic in an Armani suit, mm -hmm. which uh, they they felt I had a strong possibility of getting. I was going to read for the part in L.A. Yep. Uh oh. Do you have to break up a war there? It's like Thanksgiving. As you can see here in the background, my uh, <laughs> my kids don't have uh, a problem with the theatrics. <laughs> <laughs> Line of the week. USA Today will quote that. But weren't you doing a? By the way, before we get off the subject, Brian, weren't you going to be doing a film with Stallone at one point? What was that? Were you going to be doing a film role role with Sylvester Stallone at one point? Yeah, that was uh, right before the uh, the accident I had, and unfortunately, this uh, this wreck has put a lot of my uh, plans on hold. But uh, it's only temporary, and you know, five, six years from now, I'll look back and. See, it was just a blip on the radar screen. There you go. I like this guy's attitude, Danny. <laughs> I do. I'm serious. Why, why didn't a you? One. I would have voted for you if you ran for presidency. Well, I, that's probably not out of the question either. All right. Well, we've got a uh, pot smoking liberal back back again for another term. <laughs> did you vote for Dole? <laughs> you bet I did. Do you have any plans at all in getting involved with the booking of the uh, world of WWF? Or any hopes uh, to? It, believe me, it's uh. It's something I'd like to pursue at a later date. I'm, I'm really uh, pleased to be with this uh, or organization, and um, you know, someday when I'm done wrestling, I'd, I'd certainly like to continue a, in another facet of the organization. 
Excellent. That sounds like another career man. What what is your your impressions of Shawn Michaels behind the scenes? Uh, We've heard different things about the guy as far as a businessman goes. Your impressions on his conduct? Is he a nice person to work with? Uh, Uh, He's been uh, real good to me and uh, seems to have really taken uh, his reign as a world title holder seriously and has gone overboard in uh, those respects because... uh, there's a lot of pressure on him. There's a lot of commitments, and he's holding up very well. And uh, I think he's going to go down as one of uh, the better world champions of sports ever seen. Were you surprised to see Bret Hart come back to the company? No, not at all. Bret Hart's been with the company ten years. Right. He, uh, but apparently Bischoff was, you know, besides money, he was offering a, a lucrative movie deal, and we've heard all of this nonsense with him getting into Hollywood, but. Um, uh, Bischoff really, I guess, apparently offered him a sweet deal, uh, close to Hogan's. Yeah, it sounds like the such thing as loyalty is still alive, well, though. You hit the nail on the head there, loyalty. Yeah. Yeah. Brett, uh, like I said, has been with the company 10 years. He owes um, a great deal of his success to uh, Vince McMahon and the WWF, and here we finally saw a guy with some class. He didn't sell out for uh, dollar signs. Mm-hmm. He's, uh, he wants to and his career with the WWF, and uh, I think uh, his decision re- reflects the, the fact that he wants to give something back. What, what was your thoughts about uh, Bret Hart going on live TV and saying Steve Austin was the best uh, wrestler in the, the company and not Shawn Michaels? Is that is there a legit heat, do you think, between the two? Uh, that may have been a left-handed compliment to Steve, and uh, I'm sure it was a, a dig at Shawn, but... Uh, I'm still sure there's some bad blood over that loss at WrestleMania, and of course he's got to concentrate on Steve, but uh, I think in the back of his mind it's uh, eating away at him that his last title reign was ended by Shawn Michaels. Right. Hmm. Hey, what do you think about w- the WWF and, it, it appears, the ECW is somehow forming a merger? Do you think this is going to help Paul Heyman at all? I don't see any merger taking place. Well, they, they seem to have a small affiliation. They, they're keeping it subtle, but... It's obvious when ECW people, you know, come it's on. Obviously, a desperate move by, by Dangerously to keep his little shoestring promotion alive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you do what you got to do. I guess it seemed to work for a little while. He got some uh, some recognition. It seems to work. He only draws like seven hundred goofs to his matches. Yep. He charges thirty bucks a pop, though. I think that's a little expensive. <laughs> thirty bucks. So they are goofs if they pay seven hundred. Yeah. yeah. If they pay thirty bucks, all seven hundred. Oh, man. Ah. Uh. But I think uh, down the road, it looks like ECW, within the year, should get on pay-per-view. But the question is, will Vince help yeah, out? Who? He was promising pay-per-view this summer. Yeah, he's, he's right, Benny. Yeah, he, he seems to say he's got to do one thing and then goes back against his word. I think he, he's just a little bit nervous because he's losing talent left and right. I guess Scorpio is now... Most of his talent is severe injuries. Yeah, yeah. and people going to it's Titan. Like silence of the Lambs. He's just... Uh, slaughtering these guys left and right with these ridiculous uh, stunts mm-hmm. trying to generate interest in his product but uh, pretty soon he's not going to have any performers to, to stoop to those levels speaking of over the, the over the hill gang right? I mean yeah, a lot of people say well yeah but you're still in a wheelchair I'm saying yeah but I'm in the wheelchair but they should be in the wheelchair <laughs> <laughs> it's time for your medicine, Grandpa Hogan. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 he's off that stuff. Oh, you know what happened? I won't do anything you tell me to do. You, 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 <laughs> you remember the last time Bischoff hit the bars, right? Hit the what? The bars. Do you remember what happened the day after? No. Well, neither do I, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Would you stop? <laughs> Would you stop playing this stuff? Bischoff had to go to the toilet. Yeah, and he woke up with one of the American males, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God help him. Did you want to try to get Mr. Pillman on, or is he Rich yeah, trying to do uh, it I don't himself? know. I thought we were going to put Rich uh, Pillman right on. So let's see. What, here we go. Hel- uh, hello? I'm sorry, guys. He says he just doesn't feel very good. He just got out of the hospital. Oh, oh dear. He had to go back in because he had a little infection in his leg. And Well, should we interview you? I, are you nervous about Brian Pillman's press conference on Monday? We're trying to, you know, get a gist of what's happening here. 
Uh, he's having a press conference on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all you're going to tell. Melanie, you are on the air. We just want to let you know that. Oh, dear. Okay. Uh, well, make sure I don't say any seven-letter wo- or four-letter words. It doesn't matter. We also have one of those buttons we can push. Oh, well, that's no fun. <laughs> now, is this exciting? Is the Pullman household, you know, up in arms about this? About what? Him making this huge press conference for Titan Sports? Oh, yeah. No, this, this really is excited. Oh, everyone's excited. It's so not up in arms. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, this oh. is strange. Oh, wait a minute. Do we hear Brian in the background? He's in the back- background. That's scene. little Brian. Oh. He's a little loose cannon. Uh oh. Hey, how old is he? As opposed to the big one. How old is uh, the little two and one? A half. No, he, we don't want him on the air yet then. Okay. <laughs> no. is it, 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 let me ask you, though, as a mom, is he going to be a wrestler when he grows up? I don't think so. Not if I have anything to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask you how long you've been watching pro wrestling? Me, personally? Yeah. Oh, since I was a kid. Oh, so you're a fan. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I mean, when I was a kid, and then when I grew up, I quit. But of course, now I now I watch it all the time. Yeah. Now you have no choice. How, how did By you? Four. How did you two meet, anyway? I'd love to know. Uh, we met in a bar. Oh wow! That's yeah. the way most wrestlers meet women, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it, well, we don't need one of us drink anymore. Oh, all right. We're no. reformed bar flies. Very good. Very good. Very this reformed. Is, this is what I like. I, to, now, this, I, I I heard that you're a model or something like that. Are you like in fitness magazines or something like that? <laughs> is this a family show? Yes. You well, work, not really. The, Melanie is a, pe- about it. She's a penthouse pet. It's all right. <laughs> oh my! You're, you work for penthouse, right? Is it, I don't want to talk about it if it's a family show. Oh, well, not, not really. This is a wrestling show. You can talk about. It. You just have to keep it clear. You sure you did? You did a photo spread for penthouse, true? Mm-hmm. And when will we be able to see this? Oh, this is old. Oh. oh so I'm, I'm semi-retired. <laughs> well, wait a minute, Ed. You have back issues, don't you? <laughs> Huh? What, what are we talking like ninety four or ninety five? It has back issues. Uh ninety and ninety one. Holy cow. Very good, very good. But I'm sure you're still a very good looking woman. You sure what? You are still a very good looking woman. Oh, I take it better with age. <laughs> In other words, Ed is saying your varicose veins don't look like a Would road you map. Stop I, that. I, no, I don't have one varicose vein. Thank Melanie, goodness. can I ask you a strict business question in wrestling since you obviously are involved in some of this decision making? Do you think Brian made the right decision going with WWF rather than WCW? Oh, yeah, it was a joint decision that we made together. Uh, are you, do you actually work with him as sort of a partner in the business? I mean, in business decisions? I wouldn't go that far, but I mean, it's like everything that affects the family is going to be discussed between us. Well, he told us a few weeks ago. And I'm ago, certainly, you know, up on what's going on. Well, he told us a few weeks ago when he was on our show that, uh, that, uh, that it was money, that the World Wrestling Federation was going to offer him more money. Is that basically what it came down to? Um, no, there was probably about five or six different things that, hmm. that came into play. Huh. Yeah, obviously part of that was what happened before when he was with WCW. I know there was a little bit of a rocky road in there, again, according to what he was telling us, but he couldn't be wide open about it at the time until he finally did sign. When does, uh, when does this uh, actually start? Do you know when he begins working for the WWF? Uh, to be honest with you, I really do not think that they have you know, their plans in motion as far as that we've been told anything yet. But um, he won't be in the ring until, like, fall. Okay. Oh, because wow. of his ankle. Right, that's going to heal completely. Yeah. yeah. Do uh, we know? As far as anything else that they might do with him um, beyond the press conference, I have no idea. Okay, do you know where the press conference is emanating from? It's at uh, Titan Tower. Oh, it is? Yeah. Now, this, the live feed, I guess, will be, uh, you know, produced or edited in with uh, the Raw show because I think the Raw show will be taped. Uh, yeah, I think so, but, you know, not being, uh, you know, right in there, I'm not positive about that. Right. Have you met Vince McMahon yet? Oh, yeah. I, I've met him before, years ago, yeah. Oh, okay. And I, and I met him, you know, I've seen him recently. Did, did you have any prior involvement in pro wrestling before you were with Brian? I, I don't want to get into that. Oh, oh <laughs> my, you have secrets there. Oh, Lord. Are you going to come out with a book? <laughs> yes, actually, I will, and it'll all be addressed in the book. <laughs> hey, Bri- <laughs> addressed or whatever you want to say, no pun intended. Okay, man, man Brian dressed or undressed. Brian actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, when Brian was <laughs> when Brian was on our show last time, he said he was going to be in the National Enquirer. Oh yeah, uh huh. What, what is that? Com- they did a big old. Uh, so you might get some of your answers in there. Maybe I'm not sure. I haven't seen the article, but um, <laughs> it's supposed to come out probably. Probably be. I think they come. Their magazines come on the stands on Mondays. I don't think it's going to be this Monday. I think it'll be the following Monday. Okay. Wow. wow. We're unsure. They shot. They uh, shot it a few weeks ago. The pictures and stuff, and then they wrote it up. And I, I don't know why they're. I think they're trying to do some more stuff on wrestling now. Are wow. you in it too? In this article? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we get to see your picture there. 
Yeah, everybody's in it pretty much. They got pitch. I mean, I'm not sure what pictures they're going to run. Yeah, yeah. But they've got pictures of the family, pictures of me, pictures of him. Oh, cool. Pictures of us together. Do, right. do, wait, do you know what the article is about? Is it just like a biography of some sort? It's pretty much about, um, so, so they say, ha, 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 you know, <laughs> who knows what it's going to say when it actually comes out. I don't trust these guys, but you never know. But they said that it's going to be basically an article on, um, well, he's overcome a lot in his life. He, he, uh, he had all these throat operations. He has throat cancer that reoccurs sometimes, and he has to have his vocal cords scraped. And mm-hmm. then he was uh, told that he... Um, would never talk again. Right. And obviously could talk. Oh, yeah. Through lots of therapy. And then he was told that he would never play college football, and they wouldn't offer him a scholarship, even though he was the high school star, because he was too small. And he went in and walked on and tried out. And, you know, of course, they were dazzled by him, and he ended up being the the All-American in college. Mm -hmm. Then they told him he'd never go to the NFL because he was just too small, and he did and angled a walk-on for the Cincinnati Bengals, and, of course, they draft, you know, drafted him or, or had a walk-on or whatnot, and, and uh, he played a year for them. And um, then they, they sent him to the Buffalo Bills, and, of course, he had the ankle injury that it pretty much ended his football career. Yeah. Um, he went to Calgary for a season, though, and that's where he met the wrestlers up there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Stu Hart and Bret Hart and Owen Hart, all the Hearts, you know, uh, uh, come from Calgary. Sure. And that's where he got started in wrestling. And then, uh, so basically that, and then he's had a reoccurrence of his, of his throat problem since then. He had the car accident. He had, um, you know, just a lot of tragedies, um, a suicide in our family and, yeah. and that kind of thing. So they're pretty much doing it as a um, sort of a, you know, this guy overcomes this and that and the other, and he, and he will overcome this last. Uh, thing and become a famous wrestling star. And there should be a lot of good karma coming into his life now after all that garbage. Oh, definitely. Yeah. This is going to be our year. I mean, it, it's definitely... Uh, I, I really feel good about the decision. I mean, it's just a good feeling that we have from these people. It's just diff- a lot different from where he used to work. It's not, the, <laughs> it's not the year of the dragon, but the year of the cannon, right? That's it. Right. I like that. <laughs> hey! Hey! I might hear... Oh. That's a good one. You can use that one. The we, year of the cannon. We give you that. That is our Ooh, gift for you. That's for anything. I won't trademark it. <laughs> <laughs> that is your, your gift from us. But you still don't want to tell us when you first got involved in pro wrestling, huh? I'm sorry, guys. I didn't hear that because the kids are... Oh, you still don't want to tell us how you, were, how you initially got involved in pro wrestling? Uh, no, he, he, wouldn't like, he wouldn't like me to tell that. Uh-oh. Okay. Sometime off, really sometime off the air, the off the air. record, we'll do that. Wow. Okay. Well, no, I gotta buy her. I gotta buy her. Forget yeah. about Pillman. I'm, I'm interested. It's really not a, it's not a, you know, a no, story we'll, that. We'll drop that. You can live without it. I will live without it, and I hope you do put it in you, your book. You know though. something, Ed? I'm not even interested in Brian anymore. I'm more interested in <laughs> Melanie's career here. <laughs> My God. Well, uh, the funniest thing is they came out to do the pictures for the Inquirer. Yeah. And, um, they, you know, the photographer sent them in and, um, everything. And then he, the photographer calls up and he says, we we'll have to come back out at the gym and shoot some more pictures of Mrs. Pillman working out in an aerobics outfit because they said there wasn't enough uh, shots of Mrs. Pillman in there. And Ryan got so mad. He said, I can't believe it. This is supposed to be an article on me. <laughs> oh, my Lord. I don't know. I don't He's know. a little sensitive about that kind of thing. You know, and I'm a wife, and I'm do what the good wife would do and step aside for my husband. You know? Oh, you are, well, I wish my, you should talk to my wife about this. How come Davey Boy Smith doesn't have a wife like that? Yeah. I mean, he's trying to upstage you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She, she's trying to be a superstar herself. Huh. Well, that's all right. That's all right. Way. Yeah, she's a good kid. Don't worry about that. All right, Melanie, we're going to let you go then. Thank you so much for, for sharing all of that with us. And I'm going to go look through my 90 and 91 penthouses. Oh, have you got like a collection of them then? Actually, I don't, but I'll find one. Yeah. Okay. Wait, <laughs> Miss April, right? All right. Well, call back some other time and I'm sure we'll be able to talk. Thanks a lot. We really yeah. appreciate it. Thank okay, you, Melanie. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> All right. Melanie so Pillman. We have a, uh, and, and Bruce, Bruce, Bruce missed that. Bruce, is Bruce on line two? Put Bruce oh, he on. did hear it. Okay. I'm hoping he did. Put Bruce on. <laughs> line two. <laughs> oh, this is too funny. We got Melanie. Melanie Pillman is more interesting than uh, Brian Pillman. Can you imagine that? That was really Bruce, strange. did you hear that? Uh, yeah, I sure did. I think we've determined that both Pillmans are smarter than the two of you. <laughs> well, thank you. I, you know, I knew Brian was, but now, now I'm totally convinced. The whole she family. Was... I'm glad they didn't put on that two and a half year old. Yeah, really. She was really. She was fun to talk with. That was great. You guys are unbelievable. Have you ever spoken to her before? I uh, no, actually, I have not. Okay. <laughs> you guys are unbelievable. Is that... But Pettengill went up and sang and danced all over the stage. 
I thought Patton Gill was funny as hell doing the, uh, the the spoof on the Oscar thing at the beginning. Funny inside jokes in the song that he was doing, talking about Sonny's double D's. I told you we had a hot show, didn't I? I'm here. Brian Pillman. Am I on the air? You're Brian on the Pillman, air. You are on the air. My goodness. The Wolverine. Who cares about Ben Gill's funny joke? <laughs> what has that got to do with the business? What has that got to do with stepping inside the squared circle? The, the loose, kicking some ass. The loose ben can't, Gill's that's a good joke. question. That is Who's a good a question. Joke? Hey, Brian Pillman, where are you calling from today? I'm at the Pillman compound in Walton. Oh, but forget the Freeman, folks. Pillman is loose. This is crazy. The pill men. How Wait a the... minute. First of all, let's qualify this whole discussion. Okay. What kind of a radio station is this? How the... many watts? I'm not talking to two guys in a garage, am I, with a setup from Radio Shack, am I? Oh, no. This isn't ham radio, sir. This How is... many watts? We're going out at about, uh, what are we, 10,000 watts? Oh, there? wow. 10,000. What, what's that, Rita? Reach a square mile radius of about 3.7 miles? Mr. Pillman, you can be heard all over the city of Boston, Massachusetts. 10,000, and that's how much Bill Watts weighs. So, I mean, that has a lot in common right there. Bill Watts? Oh, yeah. Don't attack Bill Watts. Bill Watts is the guy that believed in me. He gave me a shot. Okay. He gave everyone in wrestling a brush with greatness. Mm -hmm. He was the first guy who let Brian F. and Pillman out of the bag. Uh -huh. And you guys get your mind out of the gutter. That F. and don't sound for what you think it does. Oh, damn. Oh, perverts. Oh. Flying. The abbreviation flying. for flying. <laughs> All right, well, Mr. Pillman, uh, what is your association with WCW? Are you still with the company? What's going what on? What do you think, expert? You're the one that on the air talking about wrestling, this, that, the other. Yeah. Give I'm, me your opinion. Well, I, I'm guessing that you're still with the company, but maybe you did legitimately receive your uh, notice to leave for ECW. I can't figure this out. Help us well, out I can here. figure it out. You know why? What's that? Because I'm Brian Pillman. That's right. And yeah. I shoot from the hip. You are I'll tell you what's going on. I've been fired, I'm a free agent, and what better time to be a free agent in this business? Oh, that's true, too. Red Hot, both the big two, and I can say the big two, WWF and WCW. I don't have to say brand X like these goofs on the WCW hotline. They can't even say WWF, <laughs> those paid stooges. What, what is your opinion of Hulk Hogan, point blank? Point blank, I'll kick his ass, put oh. me in the ring with the guy. Holy cow. You'll, go, you'll get into the ring with Hulk Hogan? Well, if I don't make it to the ring, I'll do it in the aisle. I'll do it in the, the locker room. I don't care. Hey, Brian, I'm the man, not Hogan. It's my time now. Brian, should, shouldn't this guy Hogan really be out of the ring by now, though? Seriously. Well, I'll tell you what. If you put me in there with him, I'll make sure he's out of the ring. Let's sign and that contract. Sign the contract. Yeah, we hear now. WCW is coming to Boston. Maybe Ed and I could get some working agreements with Gary Juster. We'll get that match Gary going. Gary Juster's a crook. Oh, whoa. Crook and Chase or just a crook? He's a crook. Why He's is that, thief. sir? Why? What he do you has mean? no ethics. He's about as immoral as you can get. He'll probably break into a cold sweat on Easter Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's low, man. Oh. Well, he's in the right business then, right? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, now what's the deal he with... He thinks he's a lawyer? He works in WCW legal department? Well, it would have been nice if you went to a day of pre-law, Gary. Are you saying... Being a swindling, backstabbing promoter over the years doesn't qualify you as a lawyer. How did he get his position, then? Did he... Being a swindling, backstabbing promoter. Oh, well, <laughs> right, well I guess that makes sense. <laughs> what about Shane Douglas? What's your opinion of Mr. He's Douglas? He's a quitter. He's a quitter. He has established a long-term record as a quitter. Wow. Let's not... Let's not... Uh, <laughs> it's plain and simple, guys. Don't use your poetic license here. WCW, he quit. Okay. WWF, how many times has he quit there? A couple times. The classroom, he quit there. He left his students high and dry. Now they're out there to fend for themselves. Duck it! <laughs> Drive by shootings! <laughs> Sounds like you're having a right now. Right to rap. These poor kids are diving under tables and chairs. Mm -hmm. huh? My lord. Well, uh, it's it's true, but what it's about your... Twitter? It's true. Don't don't try to sugarcoat it. Don't mince words. No, I don't. How else that. can you see it? We, uh, we... Juxtapose Shane Douglas versus Brian Pillman, and you look at Brian Pillman. What do you see? Achievement. You see greatness. You see a commitment to excellence. I mean, come on, guys. Two-time All-American, National Football League Wrestling Rookie of the Year, and now just general badass. A guy that won't take it anymore. 
a guy that's willing to march and bear arms and take back his streets. I used to looking for you in. <laughs> no, no, I'm okay. I have a I have a business question for you. Do you do you have any friends in this business, or are you just all alone out there? Do I have any friends? Any friends in the wrestling <laughs> business? Because it doesn't sound like you do. Do you? Why would I want any? No, uh, you got a good point there. Friends yeah. like that, you don't need enemies, guys. Believe me. Okay, so what what is your opinion? I've got a lot of friends. Wait a minute. I mean, in the business. That was uh, being facetious. Go ahead. The Hart family broke me in. They are not only friends, I consider them family. Wow. Bret Hart's a brother in law of yours, or just you being. I, I believe. I consider them family. Okay. I consider Bret Hart a brother. Oh. I will go to war for him. I'll go to the front lines of battle with a full metal jacket loaded and ready to empty into some. Body, sorry ass for Bret Hart, Stu Hart, Owen Hart, Bruce Hart, right on through the Hart lineage. Wow. They think, broke me in. They're family. Do you think Bret got a raw deal last week by losing the title to uh, Michaels? Got a raw deal. Well, yeah. do you think uh, I mean, 160, you... yep. he lost in overtime. Mm -hmm. I'd have taken that Michaels punk out in the first few minutes. Holy cow. I don't go 60. I, when's the last time you saw Brian Pillman fight for 60? Brother, if it ain't over in the first five, then... Uh, I obviously didn't have the eye of the tiger when I woke up that morning. Gotcha. Okay. What is your working agreement with Paul Heyman? Are you still with the ECW? I don't think so. You, uh, I'll be there if I choose to, though. If I want to show up and kick somebody's ass, I will. Okay, so... That'll be my working agreement. You're not on a full schedule with Extreme Championship? Well, no. Why would I? They're a low-bred, second-tier, fly-by-night, outlaw promotion. They can't afford a guy like Brian Pillman. Come on. All right. Now, if you had your way then right now, and if you chose to be working full-time in any any of the leagues, where would you like to be? What would you like to be doing? I don't even know that I can answer that. I don't see a, a lot of uh, challenge for Brian Pillman right now in wrestling. In the whole, anywhere, in the whole industry. Anywhere I may in the have world, to go they... outside of wrestling to find somebody that can fight me. I mean, let's face it. I got fired from WCW because I was too violent, too controversial. Well, that's fine. If... That's re today's pro wrestling, and so be it. Mm -hmm. All I know is Brian Pillman has to answer to who? His, his, himself. He's got to look himself in the mirror every morning. Now I've got a reputation to live up to. You sure do. I'm not some, some phony that went to the power plant and they threw a gimmick on and sent him out there on live TV to embarrass himself and his family. No. Right. I've got legitimate Credential. NFL people to answer to. That's Brian Pillman, okay? Okay. Now, if I can't, you know, if I can't get somebody to step up to the plate and let Brian Pillman be Brian Pillman, mm -hmm. then I'll go elsewhere. It's no big deal. You act like a, like, what do you think I am? Oh, I I'm a college graduate, graduate with, a, <laughs> with a bachelor's in psychology. I won't even give you my IQ scores. Now, I don't want to intimidate too many people here. A master's in ring psychology.